I want to consider in definite integrals of the form cosine to a power times sine to a power, where m and n are both non-negative integers. We're going to have two cases. In the first case, one of m or n is going to be odd. So let's assume sine has an odd power. The way I'll proceed is I want to take one of those signs, set it off to the side. That'll leave me with sine to an even power. My next step is going to be we're going to take those signs and get rid of them by using the identity cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1, or sine squared equals 1 minus cosine squared. What will be left is a polynomial and cosine times a sine of x dx. So there, I want to do a substitution, u equal to cosine x, and then you just follow your nose out. In the second case, we'll have m and n are both even. If you try to set aside a cosine or a sine here, what's going to happen is you're going to keep running into problems. So we have to use a different approach. For this approach, we're going to use these half angle identities for cosine squared and sine squared. So we'll have for cosine squared, say, 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2. Okay, for sine, same idea, except you put a minus sign in. How do you remember these? Well, you don't have to actually remember these. Just remember the equations for cosine of twice an angle. So, for instance, we would get this first one by using the 2 cosine squared theta minus 1 is equal to cosine 2 theta. And then just use algebra to push everything around. Same idea for the sine. When I do my substitution with these... We're going to have something that's a polynomial in cosine of 2 theta. Then we have to just take a look at the exponents on those and then decide whether 1 applies or will I need to try 2 again and possibly again and again. Okay, let's look at case 1. Looking at indefinite integral of sine to the fifth x dx. So our procedure is set one of those signs off to the side. We're left with sine to the fourth power. I want to rewrite that as sine squared sine squared or 1 minus cosine squared x times itself. We expand that out. We have a polynomial and cosine. And there's a sine x off to the side. So now what we want to do is let u be equal to cosine x. du is minus sine x dx. Or dx equals du over minus sine x. Now I have an expression entirely in terms of u. So I can take the antiderivative of this. Okay, minus sign I'll bring out in front. We add 1 and flip it over. And the 1 goes to a u. It gives me this. Now I just stick in cosine wherever I had a u. And then that gives me my answer. Of course, we want to check our answer. So what I want to make sure is if I take the derivative of what's inside the box, it's going to be equal to what we started with. So derivative of cosine is minus sine. Cosine cubed, I bring the 3 down. We're going to have a cosine squared, and then derivative of the inside is a minus sine x. Then in the last one, the 5 comes down, leaving me with a cosine to the fourth power. And then we multiply by derivative of the inside, which is minus sine x. You notice, from what's left over, we can pull a sine out of this, which leaves me with this polynomial and cosine. But you notice we're just working backwards up the board. So that collapses to a 1 minus cosine squared squared. Those turn into sine squareds, and then we wind up with the sine of the fifth power as promised. For my next example, let's consider sine cubed x, cosine cubed x. So in this case, you note both exponents are odd. So that means I could set aside either one that I like. So it's just a matter of choice. So just note, though, if you try it by setting aside each one and compare your answers at the end, they're going to look completely different. The only difference is going to be they may differ by a constant. And you may need to do some gymnastics with trigonometry to make them look like each other. So let's stick with setting aside a cosine. So that's going to give me sine cubed of x. Now I'm going to be left with a cosine squared here. It's going to turn that into 1 minus sine squared x. This is completely in terms of sine. This is looking like the derivative of sine. All right, so u is going to be equal to sine x. Now note, here's how it works. Whatever function I set aside, 
we're going to substitute the other. Okay, so if you need a little mnemonic to know how that works, that's how it goes. We let u be equal to sine x, du is cosine x dx, dx is du over cosine x, and when I sub out, I get u cubed, 1 minus u squared, du. Okay, I can collapse that to u cubed minus u to the fifth, and then we just add 1 and flip it over, and then u equals sine, so I sub that out, and then I get my answer. So it's pretty straightforward once you get to the substitution part. Of course, we check our answer. So the 4 comes down, leaving me with a sine cubed. Derivative of the inside is just going to be cosine. And then minus 6 is cancel, leaving me with a sine to the fifth. Derivative of the inside is cosine x. And now this is just collecting terms. Sine cubed comes out of both. Cosine x comes out of both, leaving me with a 1. And then there's a sine squared left over from there. That turns into cosine squared, leaving me with my sine cubed, cosine cubed. So this is the right answer. Now we consider the case where they're both even. So this is a little bit more ad hoc. You just have to do your substitutions and then let the final substitution decide what your next move is going to be. So let's try indefinite integral of sine squared x, cosine squared x, dx. So here, m and n are both even, they're both 2. So my procedure is I'm going to use the half angle identities, which say cosine squared of your angle is going to be equal to 1 plus cos double the angle over 2. And for sine, it's going to be the same, but with a minus sign before the cosine 2 theta. So here, I sub in, and I'm going to get 1 minus cosine 2x over 2, 1 plus cosine 2x over 2. And then I can pull out the 2s to give me a fourth in front. And then what I'm left with is a difference of two squares. So we can apply it again to this. So cosine squared of 2x is going to be equal to 1 plus cosine of twice whatever's in the box. So that turns into a 4x. And then that's going to be over 2 also. So we wind up with this. I collapse. So it's going to give me a 1 half minus a half cosine 4x. This I can do the antiderivative of. The 1 halves I'm going to pull out to make this a 1 8. So we have a 1 here. Any derivative of 1 is x. For cosine 4x, what we can do is I'll let u be equal to 4x, du equals 4dx. Net effect is just to divide by 4, multiply by the antiderivative of cosine, which is sine. So this will turn into, okay, well, this turns into a 1 because I factor it out. The 4 in here flips over to give me a 1 fourth. And then any derivative of cosine is sine, so that's going to give me a sine 4x. Okay, if I push through the 1 8th, we're going to wind up with a 1 8th x minus 1 32nd sine 4x plus a constant. Okay, note also, if I wanted, I could have turned this into a sine squared 2x and then worked off of that. Then you would need to use the uh, other formula that we have. But if you notice, I wound up with that anyway in this step. Okay, let's check our answer. I'm going to take what's in the box and take its derivative. So that'll give me a 1 8 minus a 1 8 cosine 4x. Now, we want to go from this to this here. Notice I'm going to have to do a couple substitutions to get that 4x down to an x. And I don't have enough room on the board. So let's be lazy about it and just check at a few points. All we're trying to do here is convince ourselves that we have the right answer. So let's see what we have. Go check at a few points. I'm going to go with 0, pi thirds, and pi fourths. If I put 0 into what's in the box, I'm going to wind up with, well, cosine of 0 is 1, so this is going to go to 0. If I look at what's in the integrand, well, sine of 0 is 0, so this whole thing goes to 0. So we get a 0 over here, and we're looking good. Let's go for the next easy one, which is pi over 4. Okay, well, 4 times pi over 4 is pi. Cosine of pi is minus 1. So we're going to wind up with a 1 8 plus a 1 8, which is going to give me a 1 fourth. Okay, I go to the integrand. I'm going to put in a pi fourths into each of these. Well, sine of pi fourths and cosine of pi fourths are both going to be squared to 2 over 2. When I square those, I'm going to get a 1 half. Multiplying a 1 half by a 1 half is going to give me a 1 fourth. So again, we're looking good. 
And then for my last point, I'll go for x equal to pi thirds. So let's see. Here, I don't have to remember which one goes with pi thirds, the 1 half or the radical 3 over 2, because the sine and cosine both show up. So I just know, square each one, and then just multiply through. So one of these is going to be a half, so that'll give me a 1 fourth. One of these is squared to 3 over 2, which is going to give me a 3 fourths. So 1 fourth times 3 fourths gives me 3 sixteenths. For this, I actually got to figure out what's going on. So I have cosine of 4 pi thirds. So 4 pi thirds is back here. So the cosine is going to be a negative number, which is going to cancel with this minus sign, which is going to give me a positive number. So at least we know we've got the sign without doing any actual work yet. Now I just need to know for pi thirds, what cosine do we have? Well, it's either a half or square root of 3 over 2, which is roughly 0.87. So let's see. I'm looking at pi thirds, which is the bigger of bigger angle of pi thirds and pi sixth. So we want the cosine of this. Well, if you notice, pi six is going to have the bigger cosine because cosine is the x value. So pi thirds has the smaller x value, which means it's going to pick up the smaller of a half or square root of three over two, which means its cosine has to be one half. So what I'm looking at here is one eighth plus one eighth times a half. Because remember, we agreed that this minus sign turns to a plus. What's that going to give me? That's going to give me 1 8 plus 1 16 or 3 16 And we see that at these three points, our derivative of what's in the box matches up with the integrand. And for me, that's close enough to convince me I have the right answer.